Today I'm going to show you how to make a cathedral windows quilt the old-fashioned way. This quilt is something I've been working on for over 25 years. Yes, you heard me right. Hopefully you'll get yours done a lot sooner. Well, unless you want to have a forever quilt like I do. And this quilt is just so endearing to me and so much fun. I started this again 25 years ago, like I said. I was in relatively new quilter. I'd been quilting about three years. A friend of mine had shown me this project that she was working on and it was one of these quilts. I was enamored by this. This was something I had never seen before. It was such an interesting way to build a quilt and I had to try it. Of course at the time being a new quilter I thought I'd have it done within a few weeks. Little did I know that 25 years later, I'd still be working on it. Now, it shouldn't have to take you that long. You absolutely could make this a lot quicker, I promise. So come with me as I show you how to make this incredible project, the Cathedral Windows Quilt. Let's start by looking at how this is made. So this looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is. This is made from these little units or pods that you can see here. And you sew these together and then you get this space for your color or whatever feature fabric you want. I'm gonna turn this over, but before I do, I'm gonna warn you that I've been working on this quilt forever, like I said. So there's some workmanship issues because when I started making this 25 years ago, I was a new quilter and I didn't know exactly what I was doing all the time. So you can see here, there are some holes and some some concerning places. And I should go back and repair these, and I probably will. But for now, hey, you know what? This is like a scrapbook of me as a quilter. You can see even here, there's some spots that are off center. I had to ease in some of these pieces. My stitches aren't great. So you can see that the pods are right here, okay? So when you put these pods together, so the space in here is where you put your pretty fabric that you want to highlight. I'm gonna move this out of the way and show you what I'm talking about. So when you sew these two units together, your fabric is gonna go here between the units. So when you add more units, the fabrics will keep going between the units like this. And that's how this is built, okay? So that's important as we get started because we need to learn how to make this unit right here, okay? Now you can make these in any size. My base unit happens to be six and a half inches by six and a half inches. This is the way I was taught. So this is what I have stuck with for the 25 years. You can make it smaller or bigger. Of course, all the sizes for the rest of it's gonna change, but it's easily measured and adaptable. So the first thing you're gonna do is take your muslin. And when I started making this quilt, I bought a bolt of muslin and it's probably the cheapest grade of muslin that I could get. Didn't have a lot of money to spend on it at the time. And I honestly didn't even think about quality. So it is super thin. I do have a ton of it though, which is good. <laughs> and you're gonna fold this in half. You wanna be really accurate with this and fold it nice and neat. And you're gonna press it really well along this edge, making sure you're super accurate as you press. Next, you're gonna sew up the sides. So we have the opening here right up here and you're going to sew up these edges and i sewed one to show you using a heavy duty black thread so you can see i just sewed up the edges i reinforced it by back stitching at the beginning and at the end that's important because when we start manipulating this you're going to need those reinforcements you of course would use matching thread but for these purposes i'm showing you in black once you've gotten it to this point, I always press because I always set my seam. So I would lay an iron on this and then you open this up. So you have this pocket. And next, what you're going to do is line up those seams and you're gonna nest them. So I put one seam allowance going one direction and one going the other. And then I tug right here and right here to line that up. I put some pins in it. So it's nice and lined up all the way across. Anywhere I think I need pins. OK, 
Okay, next you're gonna make sure this is all out of the way and you're going to sew a quarter inch right down that curve. Now, as you're sewing, you're going to leave an opening for turning. So you're gonna sew in partially, back stitch, leave a space, back stitch, and start sewing again. Now, this is really important. You don't want to have your opening over this point or close to these edges. You wanna make sure that it is in this section or this section. You only need one opening, so it can, you can pick whichever you want but you wanna have it maybe about this big, what is that, about an inch, and in one of these sections. And I went ahead and did one for you in black thread. So you can see I sewed a quarter inch all the way around that curve. So now you have something that kinda of looks like a wonton or I don't know, fortune cookie or something like that. Next, you're gonna clip your points just like that. Do not cut into your seam here. You wanna make sure that that stays put, but you're gonna do that on all of these just to get rid of some of the bulk. Now, when I did this years ago, and I started making this project, this is one thing I didn't do, I didn't know to do, so some of mine are wonky probably because of that. Now is kind of the fun part. Move this out of the way. You're going to turn this outside right. So you've already reinforced these seams here, so you shouldn't have any problem with things coming through and pulling apart. It should stay nice. And you just flip it. Okay. And of course you would have the matching thread, like I said, so you won't see this black coming through. Now you have something that looks sort of like this. And I just take a chopstick, push out those points, not too hard. Like that. And you have this unit. Next, we're gonna press it. Okay, now that I have this pod nice and pressed, uh, you'll notice that the opening is still open, but it's gonna be covered when we fold this and make our little pods so we don't have to worry about that when i first started making these when i learned to make these uh the lady who taught me told me not to worry about it so i don't i don't know now i kind of feel like i should stitch it closed but i haven't yet so i don't think i'm going to <laughs> and then i have a piece of it's supposed to be heat resistant template plastic that i've had for years you can see it's very warped over the years from being heated and this measures two and seven eighths inches square exactly it's the exact size of our pods so if i flip that over you can see the exact size so i put some registration marks on this i cut a hole in the middle so i could place the middle point where the x's come together right in the center and then i put the pink lines on my diagonal lines and this is going to be where i line up these pieces as I fold them in. So I'm gonna line it up as best as I can, fold in and press. Then I'm gonna turn my pad here and fold in these two and press. And remove this template. You can see that these all fold into the center making our pod just like that. Now you could pin these if you wanted to. Uh, I don't normally, although that might be why I have some wonky seams. <laughs> Maybe it would be good to pin them. Now we're gonna tack these by hand. You could take these to the machine and maybe tack them down. The thing you wanna avoid if you do that, however, is you wanna have these nice and loose, these edges here. So if you do decide to tack it down, by machine, make sure it's minimal and you're not going into these edges because you do want to have a nice fold over when you put these together and this will make a lot more sense in the next step. So we're going to just tack these down and all I do is take my thread, make a quilter's knot. So I just take the point of the thread, put the thread on top of that needle, wrap it a few times, pinch and pull it through. Make sure it makes a perfect knot at the end. And then I'm gonna 
tack these in, coming up through the center, grabbing the point of that triangle, and making three or four stitches to secure it in place. And I just keep going around doing that to all of them until you have them all turned in and tacked into place. Now it's more important that this square is the right size than it is that these points come to the exact middle. So keep that in mind. I have all of these tacked down. You could go through a few more times if you want to, but you wanna just make sure you're staying at the tips of these triangles. Once I'm done, I turn it over and knot it on the back a few times, making sure that it stays put. And I clip my threads nice and close. Now that you have this done, you're going to give it another good press right on top, making sure it's nice and flat. And you're going to start to build your squares. So I like to take two pods at a time, put them right sides together, and then I just whip stitch one edge. So I just take a needle and thread and I go right in here and I'll stitch these together just using a whip stitch. You can use a ladder stitch, you can use whatever stitch you want to. It probably would be cleaner with a ladder stitch. I'm not great at a ladder stitch, so I just whip stitch it. And also that's the way I've been doing it all along, so I kind of am just keeping with how I've been doing it. So you stitch it all the way to the end. Just keep going all the way down until you get one together like this. You can see I didn't trim my threads. There we go. So you can see this is all together. And at this point, I'll start adding my fabrics. Okay, once you have these sewn together, two of them, you're gonna add your fabric. And I just have a little square here. This measures about one and three fourths. And I actually have the original cardboard that uh, my friend gave me when she taught me how to do this. And I just take fabric, trace on it, and cut around it. It can be any scraps from projects or whatever. And then you just take a little bit of glue. And this is what I use for EPP, English paper piecing. Just put a little dab in the middle and that holds it secure. And that's it. And you're going to turn these in. Now this looks like it's a lot harder than it is. These turn in beautifully because they're all on the bias, so they roll in nice. You don't need a ton of stitching to get them to tack down. It's minimal and it just blends right in. So make sure you use matching thread and you won't even see them. So to stitch this down, you just turn in that edge and then you come up right between these fabrics you don't sew all the way through to the other side. You're, you're not going anywhere near the other side. You're simply tacking it onto these first couple layers. And notice that the fabric is a little bit smaller. You do not want it to go far to the edge because then it folds over and it can fray and it gets really hard to work with. So make sure it's cut so it's a little more than a quarter inch inside of that square and you just go around stitching that down and I'm just going in and out again not going all the way through this unit you don't need a ton of stitches it stays in place beautifully I don't know I probably put maybe 10 15 stitches down maybe I don't even think it's that many Go all the way to the edge and this again is why you do not want these tacked down in this middle too deep because then you're not gonna have this nice turn when you go to turn this around. And you keep going, turning it in. And you can see how beautifully that point right there is. And what I like to do is just stitch a couple stitches to secure those two points. Nicely. And then I go to sew this side. And I go all the way around. 
Okay, once you get to the end right here, you just secure it, pull those together, and it comes together beautifully. And I promise you this, it, it looks like it's hard, but it really isn't. These fold in so beautifully. It's, it's really nice using that uh, bias edge to your advantage. And I just knot it and then bury the knot in between the layers. Okay, so once you have one of these done, you can add another one and you keep going the same way. You're going to put these together, hand stitch along this edge, open it back up, put fabrics in here like this once it's sewn and you'll get something that looks like this and then you'll get two of these put them together hand stitch it down and you can put pieces in here and then you keep going you put those two together until you get this, you add your, your pieces here that are gonna be your fun fabrics. And you keep building and building and building until you get to something that looks like this that I'm working on. You can see I need to put pieces in here and finish up this panel until you keep getting just bigger and bigger and bigger. Like this one. And this is just so cool because it reminds me of projects I've done in the past. I mean, years and years ago, there's a basketball fabric right here that was from one of my son's quilts. Here's some millennial fabric from the year 2000. I have this fabric that was from a quilt I made for my mom. It's just like a scrapbook of all of the projects I've done. Now, one of the coolest things about this project is when it's done, it's done. You don't bind it, you don't quilt it, it's all inside of this unit there's no batting which begs the question is this really a quilt let me know what you think in the comments below i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you found value in this tutorial please give me that thumbs up and share this content that really helps out my channel i encourage you to pick something and make a forever quilt too because it really is rewarding. You will thank yourself <laughs> later in the future, especially if you're a new quilter because it will show a history of your progress as a maker. Have a wonderful day. Make sure you take some time to sew and I'll see you real soon. Bye.